We are in the reading room of the Archives and Special Collections Department of the New Mexico State University Library. Um, the archives has been around for um, 40, 50 years. Uh, began as a, a project of one of our former presidents um, who was concerned that um, there needed to be a repository for local history. Um, and this is our reading room. Uh, we uh, have a, 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 a very large contingent of, of users. It's, it's very interesting. People in this, this area are, are very interested in their history. Out of Shadows um, is about the women of southern New Mexico. Um, this part of the country uh, has been called the Wild West of New Mexico, and uh, some of the most famous figures in Wild West history come from around here. Pat Garrett, Billy the Kid, Geronimo. Um, and the question of what were the women doing uh, was to me very, very interesting. Um, there's a, there's a, a kind of um, iconic woman of the Wild West, too. She's uh, either a prostitute or a farming lady with no teeth, perhaps an old Indian woman a um, Calamity Jane character who shoots bear, um, a army wife who passes through with her husband um, in the cavalry or, or whatever. Uh, then when I was, I was contemplating all this when I was looking at photographs in our collection and, and I ran across a photograph of a young woman holding a Bachelor of Science degree. And this photo dated from 1895. And I thought, okay, there's a whole other story going on here. I, I got into this, uh, this project because of the photo collections uh, that we have here. And I think one of the most um, influential photographs actually was this of three men. Um, they were th three early professors uh, who came to NMSU, I think, in, in 1891. Um, these men, this one, holding the rifle in a manly way, uh, was a graduate of Cornell. And um, he came out here um, to teach in this brand new university, obviously with a spirit of adventure. These two gentlemen um, were Brits. They were from um, apparently quite well-to-do backgrounds in Great Britain. And look at these guys. They are celebrating the Wild West. They are just really into the Wild West. And you look at it and you think, oh, you know, the epitome, there is not a woman in sight <laughs> or any reference to, to uh, other than uh, the Wild West, the horses, the rifles. That, um, and these, these guys were definitely pretending that they were enjoying it. Um, and so uh, in our quest to find out what the women were doing at the time, um, I looked uh, at the, um, the first picture of, um, of the first class uh, at the college. Uh, five of the 13 were women. So, you know, women proved to the administration that they were serious about what they wanted to learn. Um, and it's, I think, to our credit that uh, we didn't actually um, offer uh, domestic arts or um, uh, uh, that, that kind of limited um, program until almost the 1900s. Um, the, the, it turned out there was a demand for it. Uh, women who might not otherwise have come to the college thought that, well, if they could go and get a degree in, in the domestic arts, that, you know, that would be to their advantage and they, they could possibly use that um, 
in their their lives as ranchers' wives, and um, so we find um, a dressmaking <laughs> class <laughs> um, that became a pretty popular piece of the curriculum. Um, also, it was interesting that in the the late um, 1890s, we initiated a business program. And guess who leapt in on that? Um, this is a, a stenography class. And you notice, um, I think that they were surprised to find that so many women, young women found um, business careers and stenography a uh, potential interest. Uh, this, is, this is one example. I think this is uh, actually a very lovely photograph. One of our early um, biology professors was an avid photographer, and uh, he took a great many sort of atmospheric photographs of the early university. And this one shows a group of, of women in the chemistry class. This, this is one of my favorite all-time photos, first of all, because it's very beautiful. Um, but it's also uh, a group of women in the horticulture class. Um, it's about the turn of the century. It's about 1900. Um, again, just re reinforcement that, that uh, um, education was, was becoming very important and a serious undertaking for the young women who came here. Um, this, this is a, a, a hoot, I think. Um, physical education, perhaps we were not quite as advanced in the ideas of physical education for young women. Um, considered physical education was a course called elocution and scarf drill. And this dates from um, the latter part of the 1890s. I'm not quite sure what the actual date of this is, but um, these were um, a combination of, I guess, exercise and dancing that were performed for audiences. Uh, and there is one comment the audience was stupefied <laughs> by the performance, <laughs> not knowing quite what to make of it. Um, and then we got um, enlightenment thanks to um, Vassar College, which started a very active program of uh, women's physical education. And one of the, the chief elements was basketball. And we, in fact, had a female basketball team before we had a male basketball team. And um, you know, things changed rather radically in, in the space of about five years. I think to, uh, that the young women were probably very grateful <laughs> that they didn't have to dress up, <laughs> parade around a stage, and stupefy their audience. <laughs> this, this is very, very interesting, the, uh, the Mescalero. Um, reservation, which is really one of the most beautiful reservations in the country. It's in the mountains um, to our east, um, near Rio Doso, Rui Doso. <laughs> um, uh, the Mescalero women, uh, you know, life on the reservation was, was pretty tough. And they figured out a, a means whereby they could support themselves very profitably. Um, they made uh, these beautiful baskets and sold them um, as you know, tourist prizes. Um, and there's a, a wonderful photograph in this book of, of um, one of our um, professor's wives purchasing a basket from one of the Mescalero women um, they made quite a, a, a profit, um, and it's, it's surprising to think of the women as the entrepreneurs in, in the, uh, the tribal society. Um, 
and uh, it's uh, also we ha we have some of these in our our, our museum. Um, they're just uh, incredibly expressive. They're beautiful works of art, um, and the fact that they they could turn them into a kind of mercantile enterprise uh, is um, a lovely justification for the work they did, I think. Obviously, this was a, a, a place where a lot of um, uh, Hispanic families um, turned up in, in the, the mid-19th century. Uh, one of those families, the Amadors, uh, were in, They were also entrepreneurial. They, they ran a store. Um, the family was filled with women. <laughs> and these women uh, were incredibly successful business people. Um, and to the extent that the Amador family uh, you know, became the leading citizens, really, of, of Las Cruces in those days. There's a, a wonderful picture of them um, on a picnic the Amador ladies with their umbrellas and their beautiful gowns, you know, sitting on the ground, um, just sort of relishing in, in their privilege. <laughs> uh, and it, it's a lovely story. We, we, the Amador Hotel um, still exists. So it's been an, uh, 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 under restoration for some time. It's a particular project of the, uh, the Historical Society. But uh, they were merchants, um, very, very aware of their position. And also, um, you know, they had beautiful weddings, beautiful wedding gowns. They married well. Um, they were, you know, first citizens of the town. I think um, that women's ambitions and hopes and dreams have always evolved. And we, we, you know, we think of, uh, we're in a period of evolution right now with the Me Too movement and so forth. But we have always um, had these ambitions and we've always strived to um, take advantage or to, to find a situation in which there is advantage for us, uh, finding that you could go to a university and learn some skills that would make you sort of independent. Um, I think that's a really interesting and important idea, um, and the fact that, that people didn't come out here and, and drown in the land. Um, they, they found education, um, and they found ways to make life easier for themselves in a very, very difficult environment. I wanted the audience to, to confront some, some new ideas, some, some um, counterbalance to all the uh, stereotypes that we associate with women in the West, um, and to know that there were young women who were getting Bachelor of Science degrees out here in the 1890s um, in a place that was considered pretty rough and tumble. Um, it's, uh, it's not an area that people are familiar with around the country. I mean, last night I was watching the election returns and they never even mentioned the elections in New Mexico. <laughs> we seem to be concerned with um, the coastal elections. Um, we had some very interesting things going on in New Mexico. And I think that's true of our history. Uh, where people are just not um, used to thinking about uh, what happened in um, these these large areas of the West? Uh, we we are just prone to stereotypical thinking, and um, I wanted to introduce some new ideas.